Just uh, ask me some question, and after I finish the question, take my passport. I can't give you my word that I support it, because we've been through this before, and that didn't turn out good, and then you filed for divorce. What's up, dudes? Welcome back to the number one YouTube channel in the entire world. Today, we are going to be looking at Rebecca and Zaid from 90 Day Fiance. Let's start off with Rebecca. Rebecca is 49 years old and she's from Georgia. Rebecca has worked many jobs in her days. She's been a private investigator, a mechanic, but now she is the general manager of Joella's Hot Chicken. Careful, that chicken's got some kick to it. So as general manager of this fine hot chicken establishment, she is responsible for the food management, uh, waste, cost, a whole bunch of stuff. She explains all her responsibility as general manager of this chicken shop. It's long hours. It's hard work. This is out. Come out, Toy Barn. I don't know about you guys, but as a casual viewer from the first episode of Nine Day Fiance, it felt like Joella's hot chicken got a lot of coverage that was pretty unnecessary. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I think of like good chicken places, I go to Raising Cane's. I'd be lying if I said that I knew about Joella's hot chicken before this episode. Since we're talking about fried chicken, we might as well be honest with ourselves. I think what it comes down to is chicken. Chick-fil-A versus Raising Cane's. Who has the better chicken between those two? I feel like Joella's Hot Chicken is not even in the conversation. While we're at it, we might as well talk about KFC. They couldn't compete in the US, so they fled to Europe. All around Europe, I've seen a lot of KFCs. People love them all around Europe. Popeyes, let's talk about Popeyes. Everyone is all hype about Popeyes and their chicken sandwich is better than Chick-fil-A. Listen, I haven't been to a Popeyes that wasn't complete dog shit. If it were up to me, I would use the dry ass biscuits at Popeyes to torture war criminals. We got a little bit off topic. Let's get back to Rebecca. So Rebecca says that she's a perfectionist and then laughs it off and says, okay, I'm a little bit of a control freak. I mean, who isn't Rebecca? Who doesn't want to just control everything? Rebecca says that outside of work, she's just a normal Southern gal. Outside of work? I'm just an old fashioned Southern gal. So the next scene opens up with Rebecca getting a new tattoo. She has a lot of tattoos. She has full sleeves. And she nonchalantly says, my next tattoo is of my 27 year old fiance. Rebecca's fiance's name is Ziad and he is from Tunisia. And he'll often make her a lot of videos saying stuff like, I love you so much, baby. I love you so much. My big love in my life. Rebecca. And I'll be staring at the camera like this with his big mesmerizing eyes. I'm not even gonna lie, some of the videos he sends her are pretty intimidating. Rebecca thinks that he's very romantic and she often refers to him as her Arabic prince and she claims that he is the love of her life. Now, as happy as I am for Rebecca that she found her own Prince Ali 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 Ababwa, I am somewhat hesitant to believe that this is a real couple because when there's an age gap like that and there's a guy that wants to come over to the US, we automatically assume that this guy wants to come over to the US for a green card when there is an age gap relationship like this. Now, we don't know if that's true. They could be in love. It's rare, but it does happen. Rebecca admits with the viewers that she found her one true love on Facebook. She liked a fire selfie that he posted and shot him a DM and he responded next thing you know they're engaged what a beautiful love story i met Ziad on facebook and his eyes in the in the picture that he had posted were just absolutely gorgeous something funny to note about this couple is that rebecca has kids that are around her lover's age so that's going to be really interesting especially because zahid is 27 years old and her son is 25 years old so that's going to be really awkward her son's probably like i'm never going to call him dad <laughs> I can only imagine how awkward this would be. So you're gonna actually brain this guy over. He's gonna live in the same house with you and your kids. Your mom's a MILF, man. A mom I'd like to F. Dude, totally. I feel so bad for Rebecca's son. Could you imagine your mom brings home a dude that's two years older than you and they're piping? Like how awkward is it for this guy? And it's on national TV. So like, you know, his friends are giving him about this. Rebecca says that after three failed marriages, she wasn't really looking for someone that's an ocean away. Rebecca, I'm gonna stop you right there. I love when people say some bull like this. I wasn't expecting this to happen. It just happened naturally. We fell in love naturally over Facebook DMs. What do you mean you didn't want this to happen? You weren't looking for this. You obviously obviously looked for this because you liked and started talking to this dude on Facebook. You pursued this. Don't be like, oh, it happened. It's true love. This isn't a chance encounter. This isn't you go out in the real world and see somebody and cross paths and then you see that same person five different times. This is you went out of your way to talk to this dude on Facebook. It's not a chance encounter. Don't try to make it into a true love story. It's not. And you know what, guys? I hate to be the one to point this out, but this is exactly something I would expect someone to say that has had three failed marriages. I'd be lying if I told you guys that Facebook is the best place to shoot your shot at love. It's not. Rebecca says at first their conversation revolved around him practicing his English, and that's all that really was at first. At first they were friends. Then what do you know? Fast forward a couple months. Next thing you know, he's saying stuff like, 
You are so sexy. Let me know if that was a good impression of this dude. I feel better about my Jenny impression. I feel like that one is a little bit more fuego. So because Rebecca is about 22 years older than her guy, she felt really insecure about her appearance. So she says that she used filters to cover her appearance and seem younger. In the beginning, I was scared that obviously I'm too old for him. And I did basically anything that would kind of enhance the way that I look. So here are the pictures that she sent this dude. She said that she used filters and angles to make her appear younger. Filters and angles, homie. You're talking about that face tune, bruh. Uh-oh, we got another cast member pulling a Devin, guys. Filters and angles, that's rich. You're like bringing out your high school yearbook to send this dude photos of what you used to look like. I will commend you though, your face tuning does look way more realistic than Devin. She goes full on anime character. You haven't done that yet. You're not at that stage. So this is the perfect time for me to tell you to stop. When Rebecca went to Tunisia to visit her guy for the first time, he wore a shirt with her face on it. And let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. I think it's pretty funny. But the problem is the picture on his shirt didn't look like her because she somewhat lied about what she looked like. So he even says, uh, I wore a shirt with her portrait on it, but it didn't look like her. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, despite Rebecca lying about her appearance, her dude was cool with it. And he actually says that she's still very beautiful and he still wanted to be with her. Next thing you know, he proposes. Now, do you think that he proposed and he was still cool with the way she looked and everything because he genuinely likes this person and you could see him falling in love with this person? Or do you think it's just so that he could get a green card to come to the United States? Because here's the punchline with Rebecca. She has actually been through this before. When Rebecca visited her knight in shining armor, they disagreed about cultural norms, such as how much skin she can reveal while going out in the public. Next thing you know, they show us a great scene of her dude getting really protective when another guy is staring at her shoulders. Damn girl, you've got some nice shoulders. I came hoping to get engaged, but I'm seeing a side of Zied that I did not know was there and it's definitely a red flag. I'll be honest, from the scene they showed, I couldn't tell if the guy was being creepy or he was just trying to figure out what her tattoos were and what they said. Anytime I see somebody with sleeves, I'll stare at their tattoos or zone out and like look and try to see what each individual tattoo is. Zahid has some anger issues he obviously needs to work on. I mean, this dude was just staring at her tattoos, so I don't think he did anything wrong. And then Zahid said stuff like, don't look at my girl and made it a whole shitstorm and then security came and broke it up. Saudis, this is a quick reminder to check out your Wet Sock merch. It's the number one merch in the entire world and it's currently on sale. So yeah, it's a great way to support this channel if you guys want to go check that out. For just plain jealousy, there were definitely some things that we did not see eye to eye on. For the most part, Zied and I are always able to, you know, to, to get through these, these issues that we have. Honestly, is it just me or does this couple side by side look like mother and son? Oh, whoops, I uh, can't say stuff like that. I don't want to make Colt and Debbie jealous. After the brief period of three weeks of getting to know Rebecca, her guy got down on one knee and proposed. The setting was the desert at night and it seemed like they had a little picnic situation going on. Let's check in right now with Rebecca and Zaid and see how the visa application process is going for him in Tunisia. Um, just uh, ask me some question and uh... After I finished the question, take my passport. But when this happened in the show, they took his passport, and I guess it's normal to take the passport, hold it for a week while looking over the various documents in order to approve the visa. So they really play up on the drama in this episode, like it's a big deal and oh no, they seized your passport, but I guess it's normal. I just hate that they're gonna make us wait one more week. The reason why Rebecca is so on edge about the visa process is because she's actually already had a spousal visa with her ex-husband from Morocco. I'm not gonna lie, her first husband looks super young. Dude looks like he should be in a TikTok house, but I don't know if they got a lot of TikTokers in Morocco. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, after Rebecca's first marriage and divorce, she found a 20-year-old Moroccan man. The words Rebecca used to describe lucky husband number two is that he was very charming and romantic, which are the same words that she uses to describe her current dude. Are you guys seeing a pattern here? Because I am too. Yeah, I don't think there's a problem with having a fetish for Arabic dudes. I think she does have a fetish for Arabic dudes, but here's the problem. Can't you find an Arabic dude that's around your age? Yo, Yazin, come here, dude. There's this girl that wants to meet you. She likes Arabic dudes too. No, it's not Britney, bro. She's not even a rapper. Yo, Yazin, I know you had a bad experience with Britney, but this other older girl might be the move. So what do you know? Rebecca married the Moroccan guy, brought him over on a spousal visa, and then she says that everything changed when he got to America. 
Rebecca says, I realized that he was only with me for the green card. I just, I can't even believe it. I absolutely never saw this coming, Rebecca. Wow, I can't believe this TikToker used Rebecca to get into the USA. It's also high key insane that she's playing life or let by going for mission, get young Arabic dude in the US, round two. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again oh, expecting shit. shit to change for those of you that don't know there's been a leak and it turns out that rebecca and zaid are already married so that's really good i'm happy for them now because people know that they are already married people speculate that they are a real couple and they're actually in love and he's not just here for the green card let's think about a situation logically for a second what does this guy have to gain from getting a green card and then breaking up with rebecca right now nothing because right now in the united states it's a quarantine well you guys are familiar with how it is right now in the united states i don't need to tell you job problems Prospects are not looking hot for people that grew up here, let alone someone that's immigrating over here. So realistically, if I was him and I was just using this lady for a green card, I would wait it out a couple of years before making my move at Freedom. And I'm in no way saying that this guy is here for a green card. I don't know if the guy likes her or not. What I'm saying is, even if he was here for the green card, he would not make his move right now. And if he did make his move right now, he would be incredibly stupid. So because Rebecca has already done the spousal visa situation with the Mar Rockin' man, she feels like Zaid's visa will not get approved. And honestly, in my opinion, rightfully so, if you're the person that's in charge of their paperwork and you let this dude into America, you're bad at your job. The last thing we need is another good looking foreign dude in America. I mean, have you looked around you guys? It's kind of a sausage fest. I don't know if you guys know this, but America is 49% male. Honestly, ratio. And the last thing we need is some googly eyed oh, Sorry, wrong person. Uh, last thing we need is some googly eyed motherfucker stealing all our babes. As men defending the walls, we need to know when to put our dicks down and say enough is enough. What a time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. No one knows who the president is, but I look at this as an opportunity. And I promise if you elect your wet sock as president, my fellow American men, I promise you that we will ban these good looking foreign men from touching down in America and living here and stealing our women until every American citizen has a woman of his own. Mic drop. That's it. I think I just won the f election. Right now, let's look at that magical moment when Rebecca's daughter questions her one true love's intentions about marrying the mom and coming to America. He is a, he's Muslim, he's conservative. You are technically an unmarried man. So this scene is very funny for those of us that are familiar with this couple because Zahid in the past doesn't seem like he really cares about religion and he's actually using religion as an excuse to get her son out of the house because he doesn't want to be around the son. So he's saying that Rebecca living with an unmarried man, even though it is her own son, is wrong in his religion and in his culture. Yet Zahid drinks like a fish and he slept with Rebecca before they were married. So this is a prime example of somebody using religion to gain something when it is convenient for them. Rebecca's son basically says that Zaid is coming to America, not the other way around. So for the whole cultural argument, I mean, he kind of has to get with it. Rebecca says that Micah is blue collared and caveman-ish, which isn't really the nicest thing to say about your son. I don't like kind of how caveman-ish Micah seems to be about all of this. Nice mom, screw family, right? Hey son, Merry Christmas, get out of the house so I can this dude that's two years older than you. I don't know about you guys, but I find it hilarious when people try to pull out the religion card or the culture card to try and excuse their toxic behavior. If Zaid doesn't want her son to live with them, just man up and say that. Don't use religion as an excuse when you aren't very religious in the first place. He's got to catch on to the way things work and catch on quick. Rebecca's kids say that if Zaid steps out of line, then they're definitely gonna have problems, especially if they disrespect Rebecca. And then Rebecca says that Zaid wants his own personal space, and I completely understand that. Anybody who shouldn't be comfortable, it should be us in general, because we've been through this before with you. Rebecca, I'm very curious what you're shaking your head about. Your kids are just looking out for you. You have already made this mistake before and it cost your family a bunch of money. I can already tell you put your own happiness above your children's from the way you select your men. This is your second young Muslim guy you're trying to bring over to America. The last one used you, so it's highly probable this one will as well. I'm sure your kids are disappointed and rightfully so. It would be better for the entire family if you dated a financially stable man in the United States, but instead you chose a liability because you like being looked at by a young guy and now your son gets kicked out of the house, so you are choosing this dude over your blood. When in the past, the same move ended terribly for you. So like common sense is out the window right now. This relationship right now is yet. I'm really starting to have more like 
feelings that it's just gonna go really bad because I really think that history is kind of repeating itself. Rebecca's daughter says her mom got engaged to Zaid within three weeks of knowing him. So who's to say when he finally gets to America, he isn't a completely different person from what they expect. Yeah, I agree with Rebecca's daughter. I mean, this is the weirdest midlife crisis I've ever seen. It would be better to just buy a Harley. I can't give you my word that I support it because we've been through this before and that didn't turn out good and then you filed for divorce. What makes you think this is different? Had I had 90 days with my ex, I wouldn't have married him. Okay, so Rebecca goes on to make an argument and it's super weak. Her argument is that she has 90 days to see if she wants to marry him or not. Okay, counter argument time. You don't think a guy can play nice for 90 days? Most people take years of getting to know someone before they get engaged, but I feel like Rebecca is one of those people that can't be alone. Like, bruv, you don't have to marry everyone you date. In episode two of season eight, Rebecca meets up with her former boss from when she was a PI. They met up at a gym to put on some boxing gloves and blow off some steam, which is totally understandable. I mean, I think we all need to blow off some steam because this year sucks. Wow, Rebecca just started boxing. She's already a better boxer than Jake Paul. Good, now we're gonna switch paths, okay? So you're gonna be home. Her former boss slash friend ran a background check on Zaid and found that he has no work history. When Rebecca's former boss brings this point up, Rebecca says the work that Zaid has done in his past, he was paid in cash, which is why the work history doesn't show up. And my question to Rebecca is, so does that mean he sells weed or what? And can I get some? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Rebecca also informs all the viewers that with her ex, she offered to pay for both of them and she is doing the same thing with Zaid and her ex totally took advantage of her. She is very hopeful that Zaid doesn't take advantage of her. Honestly, I also hope Rebecca's dude doesn't screw her over because she keeps wearing shirts with his face on it. So that means if this guy does take advantage of you and screw you over, you have to throw out your entire wardrobe, which sucks. Quick question, does anyone else wear shirts with your fiance's face on it? I'm genuinely curious because this is the first time I've seen someone do this. Who's that on your shirt? Oh, uh, so this is my fiance, Ziad. Okay. Yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's from Tunisia, which okay. is like kind of at the top of uh, Africa. Okay, be honest. Do you think Rebecca wakes up, puts on that shirt, and is like, oh, I pray somebody asked me about my fiance today. <laughs> Walks in a room, nobody's looking. Hey, I bet y'all want to know who's on my shirt. It's my fiance. Cool. And he is about to have his visa interview in a okay. couple of days. Okay, so and you get then... to see him. Yeah. And she's been through this before. This isn't her uh, first time. Yeah. Rebecca's friend keeps it real. Now let's take a look at that cringe scene when Rebecca goes to GameStop to buy Zaid some video games so he can play Call of Duty with Asuelu and Andre. Zied won't be able to get a work permit for six months. So yeah, he had mentioned that he wanted a video game console because he's going to be stuck at home. Um, and needing something to do. So let me get this right, Rebecca. Zied is coming to America and he's gonna stay home and play video games while you work. <laughs> Honestly, all I can say about that is poggers, dude. The only question I have is, will he let you peg him if you buy him a PS5? But Rebecca says to the staff member, you'll have to help me. I have no idea what I'm looking for. And then she follows it up by telling the viewer she's thinking about getting him a soccer game. Honestly, FIFA wouldn't be a bad pick. Uh, I wouldn't say Fortnite. Definitely don't get him Fortnite because of the skill gap. Kids are too sweaty these days. I personally think Grand Theft Auto would be a great game for this guy. But if you gamers have any recommendations, comment them below. My son is 25. I think the last time I bought one, he was 17, 18 years old, something like that. Mm-hmm, okay. So do you remember what your son likes to play? Well, I mean, it's, it's not for my son. Uh, from my professional opinion, Rebecca is just one of those people that overshares. Like every word out of her mouth is about steering the conversation into talking about her dude. And it's like, bruv, no one cares more than you do. Pretty sure this GameStop employee just wants to sell you an overpriced PlayStation, watch Attack on Titan and smoke a bowl when she's off work. She probably doesn't care about your love life, but Rebecca still tells her all about it anyway. Question about how old is your fiance? He'll be. 28, my son is 25. Oh, wow. Yeah, Rebecca, don't be shy. Tell her how you kicked your son out of the house because your fiance wasn't comfortable with that. I mean, what the ass, Rebecca? Your fiance's gonna be home playing video games anyway. Maybe he wants someone to play video games with. They could have played Super Smash Bros when you were at work, bro. Then Rebecca asks if her fiance can hook up her credit card to buy more games on the system. And the employee's like, yes, ma'am. This scene really trips me out because it feels like a mom buying something for her 12 year old son, but instead she's buying something for her fiance. So it's gonna be 2 15 15. Very cool. Oh, who's this on the card? Ah, uh, that would be my fiance. Oh my God, you guys. It's like, when does it stop? You have your fiance's face on your credit card? What? He's cute, right? Yeah. I would have laughed so hard if the employee was like, nah, this dude's beat as fuck. <laughs>
I'm honestly pondering to myself why this girl fishes for responses about her fiance to literally everyone. I'm so confused why Rebecca keeps doing this. It's like she needs validation from every single person she meets about her fiance. And I just really don't understand why. I mean, if you love him and you want to spend your life with him, I feel like that should be enough. But no, she goes to places and pays with a credit card with her fiance's face on it to start up a conversation about her fiance and see what other people think about it. I just, I don't understand why. So Rebecca tells these gamers that she gets teased by her kids about her relationship with her fiance and they're like, oh my God, hey, did we get the payment so this person will stop talking to us? Okay, great. And then the guy actually says, awesome. Like, oh my God, the transaction's done. You can fucking leave now. Like, why are you talking to us? Rebecca goes on to say that most people can't understand the special bond we share. <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, where? You've known this guy for about three weeks. I'm talking real life physically being next to him for three weeks and then you guys got engaged. Talk to me when you have a couple years under your belt. Talking about special bonds and shit, please. Y'all haven't even lived together yet. The people on the show are wild. Wild. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be making update videos about this couple because TLC keeps coming out with episodes. And yeah, guys, it's lit. Uh, comment below, subscribe. Let's be friends. Let's be friends. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.